Good evening, everybody. Um, tonight, while my girlfriend is sleeping, I'm gonna try to uh, do another weight reduction on on the printer. It is currently using uh, MGM12 on both X and Y axes, um, but I want to go here with MGM9 because it's gonna save uh, quite a bit of weight, and weight is the enemy of acceleration. So the goal here is to swap these. Swap one of this uh, of the uh, of the MGM twelve with MGM uh, nine. So just for the sake of it, these are four hundred millimeters, and the MGM twelve around three uh, three fifteen grams, and the MGM nine with the sliding block one seventy five. So roughly. 140 grams that it's gonna say which is a lot of weight so I have reprinted all the parts to um, to make that swap so this is the top carriage mount for the uh, extruder and this is now uh, done with uh, MGM 9 there's also two holes to mount the accelerometer I've reprinted those because obviously the um, the difference between MGM 12 and 9 is the distance, the mounting holes. Uh, this is 20 millimeters, this is 25 millimeters. So not the same. So the parts for mounting my carbon rods needs to change. Um, I will use brass inserts in all those holes this is going to be for mounting because i don't want to screw directly in and, and and tap the holes with uh, a tap directly in plastic it's uh i think it's better using brass inserts so we're going to do that now and once everything is installed we're going to go ahead and launch a uh, input shaper auto tune and it's going to measure the frequencies and we'll compare i'll, I'll show you the results uh, between now the MGM 12 and the MGM 9 and see how much of a change this has made for me so So we're done with the brass inserts, so we are ready to reassemble the whole thing. Um, well, first we need to dismantle, so that's going to be next. I have changed my mind. I am decided to switch from this sexy part or assembly to a square tube that I bought. And um, I was, it, it was um, stiff on, on, on this way, but the issue I had with really high acceleration and high speed was uh, the mount was um, oscillating, really, really tiny bit oscillation. And this mount should fix that. Um, it is way stiffer than the carbon rods. And um, it's gonna, at the end, um, if I calculate all the inserts and that stuff, I think um, I'm gonna save about three grams, <laughs> which is not a lot, but everything counts. So, um, and it looks good too. I mean, this, this was really cool, really cool design, I think. But yeah, I'm gonna switch to this. All right, again, we are done mounting this beautiful part square tube carbon fiber and we're now going to test uh to see if we made any improvement on the uh resonance test the uh input shaper or clipper so we are going to so okay once you're done with the uh the uh, uh resonance test it's going to generate csv file and then with the csv file you can render a graphic like that that's going to show you uh, the results. So on the left, we have the new one 
with MGM9. And on the right, we have my old measurements when I was running MGM12. Um, I was not expecting a lot of change on the X since we didn't change a lot, except the, the sliding block on the rail is a bit smaller, but it's not a whole lot. So as you can see, it's not really changing a lot, um, except it's recommending now a new shaper, which is MZV before it was running 2Hump EI. Uh, frequency, the peak was at 100 before, now it's a bit lower. Um, I think that's because I have loosened the belts. Uh, they were too tight, so I was having an issue where parts were failing because of too high tension. Now it has lowered, so frequency has gone down a bit. That's my guess because I don't think uh, the block has changed anything. It should have gone up a bit with a lighter block because when you go lighter, frequency should normally go up. Um, but this is uh, the comparison before and after, uh, where the after is on the left side. So this is for the X, and if we take a look at the Y, this is where we should see the biggest um, change. So on the left, we have the MGN9 and the MGN12 on the right. So before, it was peaking around uh, like 45, and now it's got a peak around 60. So frequency has gone up, which is a good thing. Uh, like I said, lighter should go higher in the frequency. If you have a too low value there, you should see about uh, your frame rigidity or uh, trying to lower the weight on the carry edge on the print head. So in this case, I think it helped. Um, it's also changing the recommended shaper from 2Hump EI to uh, EI. And all the frequencies of the recommended uh, shapers have gone up quite a bit. Um, yeah, so I think, I think that's a good thing. And we're going to see good results on the print. Uh, this is where you, you want to go uh, when you print fast. I mean, you want something as light as possible to eliminate uh, vibration. So what you do now is that you put the recommended shaper for uh, the X and Y with the recommended value. So in this case, on the left side, it's recommending the EI shaper at 59.4. And then you put that in your printer configuration, the clipper configuration file. So for the X, uh, we're looking at the I, uh, DY, EI and 59.4. That's what we have here. And on the X, we had a recommended shaper MZV at 88.4. So those are the values I have here. So we're just gonna upload that to the printer and you're done. Uh, you don't have to redo this unless you change something physical on the printer uh, that will be lighter uh, or uh, heavier, or if you change anything mechanical, you'll probably need to retune input shaper.